Okay, in this lesson today, we're going to be learning about how Tennessee becomes a state and how our nation grows. So we're really kind of doing two lessons in one. Now, Tennessee uh, becomes a part of North Carolina during the Revolutionary War or during the time that the United States uh, declared war or independence against uh, England uh, during the Revolutionary War. Now, uh, North Carolina um, kind of had an issue. They, they are a big state, but on their western uh, border, if you look at the map, their western border, you see the Appalachian Mountains. Well, the western border, the Appalachian Mountains, part of it belonged to North Carolina, but there was also land on the western side of the Appalachian Mountains. And many of the uh, North Carolina citizens had moved over and were living in this area. Uh, that we will later call Tennessee. Uh, so North Carolina claimed this area that you and I live in here in East Tennessee as a part of North Carolina. Kind of confusing, I know, but stick with me. Um, this is all great, but the problem is for those citizens that are living here in what will later be known as East Tennessee, their government is too far away in North Carolina. So if there's a problem, they can't get to the government of North Carolina. So, North Carolina agrees that uh, what we'll do is we'll let go of that land west of the uh, uh, Appalachian Mountains. And so, the people living in this area that we call East Tennessee uh, applied for with Congress to become the state of Franklin. All right? So, the state of Franklin is found or formed in 1784 because the government of North Carolina was too far away. Yeah, John Sevier uh, was named as the governor. Uh, he was the first governor of the state of Franklin. Sevier was the only governor for the state of uh, Franklin because um, due to several issues, Congress did not recognize uh, Franklin or this area that we live in in East Tennessee as being a state. And so North Carolina uh, finally makes up its mind and says, well, we don't want to release that land east or west of the Appalachian Mountains. And so um, the state of Franklin really technically doesn't exist, although we in East Tennessee like to say that it did. Uh, officially, it did not. All right? So it says John Sevier was first governor of the state of Franklin. Sevier was the only governor. Franklin was not recognized by Congress. All right? So this area that was known as the state of Franklin by the local people actually goes back to North Carolina. Now, in 1789, uh, Tennessee is formed, this area that is uh, East Tennessee, or that we referred to earlier as the state of Franklin, uh, tries again to become a state, and, and they are acknowledged or recognized as a state in 1789. Now, the president at the time was George Washington, our country's first president. He uh, chose William Blunt, who was a politician from North Carolina, to be the governor of Tennessee. And so William Blunt uh, becomes governor of Tennessee, selected by George Washington. And Knoxville, Tennessee, is, the, uh, is named as the new capital of the state of Tennessee. So a little history there about East Tennessee, how we actually uh, belonged to North Carolina, and then uh, the state of Franklin and then became known as Tennessee. In 1800, uh, Thomas Jefferson was elected as the third president. Now, after uh, George Washington, our second president was John Adams. Well, in 1800, Thomas Jefferson was elected as the third president. Jefferson is a little bit different from Adams. Uh, Jefferson believes that the states should have stronger rights than the national government. Okay, uh, This means that uh, when decisions are made about uh, will it help the federal government or will it help the state government? He said, Jefferson was for this idea of let's, let's help out the states first. Jefferson was for a smaller government. That means uh, he believed that the government should not be involved in every aspect of the state. Uh, let's let the states make their own decision. Uh, the national government needs to kind of step down a little bit. John Adams, our second president, was different. He wanted to help... Uh, businesses to grow, especially big businesses. Jefferson uh, felt like, you know, we need, or uh, Adams, I'm sorry, felt like we need to really pump up our businesses and let them grow. 
Jefferson, again, is different. He says, no, let's help the farmers. So we have some differences between our second and our third president. Right? And so this is going to be kind of interesting. <clears throat> now, during uh, Jefferson's presidency, at the very beginning, uh, if you look at the map of the United States during this time, the United States made up all the land east of the Mississippi River. The land west of the Mississippi River belonged to France. Now, in 1803, Thomas Jefferson sent representatives to France to meet with uh, the ruler of France, Napoleon Bonaparte. Now, they met with Napoleon, and uh, they came up with, uh, they were going to make an offer to see if he would allow uh, the United States to own this land. After all, it's in our continent, so why not just give it to us? And to much of their surprise, Napoleon said, okay, I'll sell you this land. And I can't remember the exact price, but it was actually very, very cheap. When you stop and compare it, it's very cheap. And so Napoleon, in 1803, Napoleon Bonaparte, ruler of France, offered to sell all the land east uh, or uh, west of the Mississippi River to America. Now, this uh, doubles, it says the size of America doubles in size. Uh, from 530 million to 530 million acres are added. Now, folks, that, that's a huge addition to the United States. So we go from uh, all these colonies, or all the uh, states, um, to the east of the Mississippi River, to now we've also gained the land on the other side of the Mississippi River. Now, uh, Jefferson is very curious about this land that uh, we just purchased, and so he chooses two men, Meriwether Lewis and William Clark, and he uh, uh, has these guys get together a group of men, and they travel this new land that was purchased in the Louisiana Purchase. they got three things they have to do. Number one, gather information about landforms, plants, and animals, and the climates of the West. Number two, study the cultures of the Western Indians. He wanted to learn more about these Indians that lived uh, to, the, uh, to the west of the Mississippi River. Also, he wanted them to explore the two rivers, the Missouri and the Columbia Rivers. And he wanted them to look for what's called the Northwest Passage. You've learned that in earlier uh, lessons, how many people, early explorers, uh, when they came to North America, they were looking for a faster way to get through here. They didn't recognize what a great continent this was. So Jefferson said, all right, while you're out exploring, look for this Northwest Passage, a quicker way to get through the continent. Now, uh, on this trip, uh, Lewis and Clark hire a lady uh, by the name of Sacagawea. She was a Shoshone woman who served as a translator. Now, she's very important because... Lewis and Clark could not speak the uh, different languages of the uh, various native tribes that they would come in contact with. So Sacagawea could. And so she would uh, translate for Lewis and Clark to let the uh, native people know that Lewis and Clark and their Corps of Discovery, their group of men that were there, were coming in peace, that they were not coming to take their land. And so therefore, Sacagawea is very important uh, on this uh, uh, trip that Lewis and Clark make. Now, I talked about this group. They're called the Corps of Discovery. This is uh, Lewis and Clark and their uh, team. The Corps of Discovery was a team of people who worked together to explore the new land. Lewis and Clark proved they did several things. They proved that it was possible to cross the continent through the Rocky Mountains. Now, also in your book, it talks about during this time that a man by the name of Zebulon Pike uh, explored uh, in Colorado what would later the part of the Rocky Mountains is later named uh, Pikes Peak. All right, so that concludes our lesson today about uh, Tennessee becoming a state and also a little bit about the Louisiana Purchase. Have a great day. Thank you.